So you've made the choice of working with a financial advisor. Don't do it until you watch this video. All right, so it might sound like I'm bashing financial advisors. I actually am one. But what you need to know is that the word financial advisor is not regulated. Anybody can call themselves financial advisors and they might not have any licenses, credentials, backgrounds at all. So what I'm going to teach you today is how to find out whether your financial advisor has the credentials that you want in what capacity they have to work for you. The first link you're going to wanna to check out is brokercheck.finra.org. We're gonna put it right down here. And what that'll do is allow you to look up and do your research on who you're deciding to work with. They'll tell you whether or not they're registered, what licenses they've passed, and whether or not they're even an advisor at all. What a lot of people find out is the, the person they thought was a financial advisor actually isn't. Maybe they're an insurance salesperson. Maybe they are a salesperson for another company, but they're calling themselves a financial advisor because once again, it's not really regulated. So this website will allow you to do the research and make sure that it's the person you think you're working with. The other thing that this website will do is it will allow you to see if they've had any complaints, if they've had any lawsuits against them, uh, if they're in good standing, everything. So it's something that you are definitely going to want to do if you're going to hire a financial advisor to work with. The second thing you need to know is that financial advisors, even when they're licensed, can be brokers or they can be fiduciaries. And a broker is somebody who basically charges a commission based on trading your assets or putting you into an, into an account. And a fiduciary is somebody who charges a fee either upfront or on the assets, but is more in your corner. What a fiduciary has to do is they have to make sure that they're putting your interest before theirs. You can also be duly licensed, which means that you can charge a commission or you can also act as a fiduciary. Where this comes into play is if you want things like annuities or if you want things that maybe it's better to charge a commission on, those types of advisors can actually do both. And the way you find out whether or not your advisor can be a fiduciary or, or has a license to be a fiduciary, you'll see that there's different series. The series are the tests that, that financial advisors take. And if they have a 65 or a 66, that means that they're registered to be a fiduciary. The last thing that you need to know is how financial advisors get paid. And you should not feel bad asking this question. It's, you know, it's, they're spending their time. It's obvious that they're making a, a living. So how are they actually getting paid? And like we talked about before, there's three different ways. The first way is by charging commissions. That can be mutual funds, stocks, bonds, uh, annuities, insurance products. Those are different ways that you can get paid a commission as a financial advisor. Commissions aren't really good or bad. You just have to know whether or not your advisor is paying them and where they're coming from. Insurance products will usually pay a commission out of their pocket, out of the insurance company pocket. While mutual funds, if you do an A share, and it's a 5% commission, you're actually paying that 5% upfront. So just know if they're making a commission, where is that money coming from? The second way a financial advisor can get paid is by charging a fee on the assets. And this is a pretty common one where they say, okay, I'm going to charge a 1% fee to manage your money and we're gonna participate in gains and losses together. If your account goes up by 20%, what I make is gonna rise by 20%, but if it goes down by 20%, what I make is going to fall by 20%. A lot of people like this because they want their advisor in their corner working with them instead of just charging them commissions on what they have. The last way a financial advisor can get paid is by charging a planning fee. And so the way we'll do it is if somebody comes in and let's say they, they're cousin or their nephew is a financial advisor. Maybe they haven't done it that long, but they trust them, but they just want a second opinion. Or let's say they manage it themselves and they want a second opinion. And we'll do a planning fee and give them our opinion and just charge a set amount for our time. And that's pretty common for those scenarios or if you're a business owner, 
those types of things. So those are the three ways that financial advisors can, can get paid. And you should absolutely ask these questions. You should ask, what series have you passed? What licenses do you have? How long have you been in the business? And most importantly, how do you get paid? And if you're comfortable with all that, then financial advisors can be a huge asset to help you meet your retirement goals and your long-term financial goals. Thank you so much for watching our video. If financial literacy and education is something that you're passionate about or you wanna learn about, please consider subscribing. We're not here to sell you anything or even give advice. We're just here to educate and try to make everyone a little bit better through financial literacy.